I'm Ann Dart. I'm Tracy Stormy. And I'm Kathy Knight. And together we are It Was a Dark and Stormy Book Club, a podcast for mystery lovers. Welcome. If you enjoy our show, please consider contributing to the Dark and Stormy Patreon. By becoming a patron, you will help us create better and quality content. There are also benefits to becoming a patron, such as exclusive content and Dark and Stormy merchandise. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash darkandstormybc. Check our website for the link. We appreciate any and all contributions. Thank you. Hello and welcome to episode 107 of It Was a Dark and Stormy Book Club. Today we're going to try something a little different. Let us know if you like it. I'm going to give a review of a mystery series by Eleanor Kuhn. It is called the Shaker Mystery Series. But first, Tracy's going to give a book report on The Other Gloria by L. A. Villafaint. Stay tuned till the end. We will feature an interview with Lori Lewis Ham of the Mystery Rat Maze podcast. Today I will be reviewing the book The Other Gloria, published by Smith Publishing in July of 2019. On a dark night in January 2019, Gloria finds herself behind the wheel of a car, beaten and covered in blood with no idea how she got there. She loses consciousness consciousness and eventually wakes in bed next to a man who should have been her beloved fiance, but it's her dangerous ex-husband whom she thought she had escaped two years earlier. She's trapped in 2003 and living with her tormentor once again. First off, I'd like to start this review by telling you that this book contains multiple trigger warnings for domestic abuse, violence, and mental health. That being said, L.A. Villafane did an excellent job of describing describing the very real struggles people endure on a daily basis. This book actually aided her in her own recovery from dissociative disorder and PTSD. When I started reading this book, it grabbed me right away. I mean, what a great opening scene. Our protagonist, Gloria, is driving a car. She looks down. She realizes she's covered in blood, but she has no memory of how she got there or why she's soaked in blood. Well, let's just say the author author got my attention with that opening scene. This story is told from, in my opinion, three different timelines, 2003, 2017-18, and then the present. Gloria also is a mother of two young daughters, which in 2003, we get to witness them as children, but then 2017 through the present, we get to see how their adult lives turned out, how their young adult lives turned out, which I thought was an interesting concept because you get to witness how the abuse affects them as young women. I can't help think that there is an underlining question in this book, and that is, what would we all do if we had a chance to do it over again? Gloria takes the opportunity to try to right some wrongs in her life. I'm not going to tell you what those are. You're just going to have to read it and find out for yourself. One of the best aspects of this book is the character development. Lori, L.A. Villafane, did such a good job with the growth of her characters from the past to the present. All the characters were extremely fleshed out. I found myself rooting for Gloria and despising Charles. All the emotion that Lori, I'm sure, intended. Also, if you have never heard of dissociative disorder, this book in brief explains what that is. The author has first-hand knowledge and she says, the way I have depicted dissociative disorder in this book is the way I experienced it. Villafane says, like Gloria, I have lost most of my memories of my daughters growing up and I regret that more than anything. The experience I describe in this book are exactly how I experienced episodes. I rarely check out anymore, although I don't think I'll ever really stop completely. Very interesting. I just can't imagine 
imagine not being able to remember, especially my children's upbringing. That just seems so sad. I have to say, I didn't know a lot about the subject myself, and I feel by reading this book, I can understand it now. Sometimes when you read mysteries, they are very predictable, and I really enjoyed the fact that I had no idea where this book was going to end up. It was a refreshing read. I would definitely not classify this book as a casual read. You really need to stay focused on the timeline. Other than that, it flowed extremely well. If I had one small criticism, I would just say that there were times in the book that it focused a little too much on the trivial event. Some people enjoy the small details. I'm much more of a let's get to it kind of girl. I would give this book a solid seven and a half out of ten. And the biggest compliment I can give is I know this book's going to stick with me. I can't tell you how many books I read that after about a day, I've forgotten everything about the book. And this will not happen with this book. This book is available where all books are sold. Check with your independent bookseller. And if they don't have it, I'm sure they can order it for you. And here's a good little tip. If you are a member of Kindle Unlimited, this is available for a free download. So there you go. You could start reading it today. Next up is Anne's report on the Shaker Mystery Series by Eleanor Coons. I hope you enjoy. Instead of a book report this time, I have a series, and it is a wonderful series. You are going to love it. It's Eleanor Coons Shaker Mystery Series. It follows the story of Will Reese. And he is a weaver back in the late 1700s. He has just returned from the Revolutionary War. He has come back to upstate New York to reunite with his son, who was a very small child when he left. His wife had just recently passed away. He had to go and earn money for the family, so he left his son David in the care of his sister. When he arrived back five years later, David was, I believe, 12, and he had run away from home and was living with the Shakers. The Shakers is the religious community. It's based, I think it's an offshoot of the Quaker religion. They wear the same type of ordinary plain clothes. The women covered their hair. The Shaker religion does not believe in marriage. It does not believe in sexual intercourse. So, of course, the religion has a tendency to die out. I believe there are 20 some members in the United States today, their numbers are built up through adoption or people joining them. They don't raise their own members. But because they're different and because anybody who's a little different is suspected of all kinds of things, the Shakers didn't have an easy life. They were hardworking, but people suspected them of all kinds of weird things because of their strange attitudes and their strange dress. And the fact they stayed separate from the community. They didn't go into town unless they really had to. When Reese goes to collect his son from the Shakers, he discovers a murdered young Shaker girl. Will is a man of infinite curiosity. He has to know how things go, how things work. He he is not a policeman. He's not a detective. He is just a man who has a bountiful curiosity and wants to know what's going on. He becomes sort of a go-between between between the Shaker community and the people of the town because if they had reported this young girl had died, townsfolk would automatically assume it was a Shaker who committed the murder. That would be the end of it. They would arrest whoever they felt was easy enough to arrest. In the process of finding out what happened to this Shaker girl, He meets a young lady who will become his next wife. Well, he meets this young lady. There's a sweet little love story that goes along with that. The Shakers want Reese to act as the go-between, handle the murder mystery himself, and not get the sheriff and the townspeople involved in the case because of the suspicion between the group. That's where he gets his start in this series. One of the things I really like about this series is the fact that Eleanor puts a lot of history 
and historical facts that come into play during these books. Every story has a little bit of a history element to it. It makes the books even more interesting. There are eight books in the series. A Simple Murder, that's the first one, and the latest that just came out in January of this year is called A Circle of Dead Girls. I would recommend you read this series from the beginning to the end because you meet people as the story goes along. The Quakers, there are quite a few characters there. The women in the Shaker community, women had equal rights with the men. There's a lot of interplay between the Shakers and Will and the young lady that he meets eventually marries. As you go through these books, they follow each other. The second book started about a month after the first one ended, so it just slowly builds up as you go. In the latest, A Circle of Dead Girls, Will meets up with a traveling circus, and it's a little different from the other ones, but of course there's a murder. Will has to solve the murder. It's a really nice series. It's not a teeth clencher. There's no blood and guts, so you don't have to worry about if a younger person wants to read this book. It's not going to put any triggers out there. They're very sedately done, but they are excellent stories. Once you get into the storyline of Will and his family, every book you look forward to what's going to happen next. As his family grows, I think you'll enjoy them. I certainly do. I hope there's a lot more in this series. Eleanor Kuhn was the 2011 winner of the Minotaur Books Mystery Writers of America First Prime Novel competition. She lives in New York, where these stories take place, and received her master's in library science from Columbia University, and is currently the assistant director at the Goshen Public Library in Orange County, New York. Highly recommend these books, and I hope you enjoy all eight. These are a series and a mystery that we really recommend. Please check them out. If you like this format, please let us know. In an effort to keep our listening audience informed of other great podcasts out there, we would like to introduce Lori Lewis Ham, who is part of the Mystery Rat Maze. Welcome, Lori. Thanks for having me. My first question is how'd you come up with that name? Well, that's actually a long story. It's actually one of my email addresses and my Twitter handle and kind of all over the place. It's a combination of the fact that I love mysteries and I used to do animal rescue of pet rats. So mystery rat. Ah, there you go. (laughs) (laughs) It's actually the name of our mystery section in Kings of Life. So that too seemed to just be a perfect fit. Very good. Whose idea was this and how did you get started? Well, it was mine. I've always enjoyed podcasts for quite a few years. At one point, I actually was thinking about wanting to create a web series, and that just became too complicated and expensive. And I started thinking, why not do a podcast? In Kings River Life, we also cover local theater, so I have a lot of theater connections. So I came up with the idea of having local actors read mystery short stories, and then it developed into adding uh, first chapters as well. Well, speaking from two people sitting here who know the work that it goes into making a podcast, that's something you regret or are you glad you got this started? I'm I'm glad I did it. It has been a lot more work than I realized it would be. (laughs) How long have you been doing this? It will be two years in June. It's two years in April for us. Ah. We're older than you are. (laughs) I bet it is. (laughs) I really enjoy the format on your show. How did that come to be? Well, my goal is to kind of try and give it an old time radio show feel, which I also really have loved those since I was a kid listening to all the old radio shows. I wanted to get an actual announcer. A friend of ours is not only a local actor, but he's worked in radio. He's voiced a lot of commercials in this area. So I asked him if he would be interested and he said yes. So that's how we came up with, you know, kind of the having a 
an announcer. The other just kind of grew. I knew I wanted to have them read the stories and the chapters kind of develop from there. Well, I have to say, he has an amazing voice. Yes, he does. He's He's been doing this for a long time. If you lived in the Fresno, California area, you would hear him doing commercials on the radio and on television. What do you consider your audience dynamic? That's a good question. I think we get a lot of our Kings of Life readers that listen. I think we span the ages quite a bit because I know a lot of younger people listen to podcasts who maybe wouldn't read the magazine. I know we have some listeners who are in their 